Thank you for joining us on WQPH 89.3 FM, Shirley Fitchburg, Queen of Perpetual Health, and welcome to another edition of WQPH's Local Matters. Happy Mother's Day from all of us at WQPH. And in light of Mother's Day weekend, we turn our attention to Our Lady of Fatima. Our very own WQPH's Marianne Herald interviews Mike Ferrigno and Ned Green, the VP of Fatima Shrine in Boston, about Our Lady of Fatima Shrine, the Crusaders of Fatima, and much more. To learn more about Our Lady of Fatima Shrine in Boston, visit FatimaShrineBoston.org. Well, hello, everyone. We're back, and we have two very distinguished guests we have Mike Ferrigno, who's back for round two. Hi, Mike. Hello, Marianne. How are you? Thank you for coming. Thank you for having us. Mm-hmm. And you brought a good friend of yours. You want to introduce him? Ned is uh, the vice president of our Fatima Shrine in Brighton, Massachusetts. He's been with the shrine for decades, and he's uh, very knowledgeable on Our Lady of Fatima and how important this devotion is right now in the modern times. And uh, he's going to give us some background of our the apparitions of Our Lady of Fatima in, in 1917, what Our Blessed Mother told the children, and you know the message for the world back then and how it's relevant now today. Great. Okay, well, welcome, Ned. We're uh, thrilled that you could come. Well, thanks for having me there, Marianne, and thanks for the introduction there, Mike. Appreciate it. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been working uh, with a group. We call ourselves the Crusaders of Fatima. And we run the shrine dedicated to Our Lady of Fatima in Brighton. Uh, it's located on the old monastery grounds, the Passionist Monastery grounds behind St. Elizabeth's Hospital. We are basically a first Saturday group of reparations. So we provide the devotional services there at the shrine, mainly the first Saturday devotion, as well as we have the candlelight processions on the 13th of each month from May through October. Mm-hmm. So, and we've been, they've been there about, to give you a brief history of the Crusaders, uh, they started back in 1957, I believe. There's a group of men who used to frequent uh, the retreat house there uh, with the Passionists. And as a result, they formed a First Saturday group and began to hold the First Saturday devotions there on the grounds of the monastery. And then around 1963, they decided to have a candlelight procession on the grounds on October 13th. Beautiful. Over 5,000 people showed up for that event. You're kidding. No. And it was wow. from there that they decided they can support a shrine. So they incorporated, became a nonprofit to raise money to build a shrine and maintain it there in 1965. And then they had fundraisers, raised the money, and it finally opened in 1969. Wow. I've been there, but I've never heard that background. It's very important for us to understand what has happened. What a gift. Yeah, yeah. No, it's mm-hmm. been a blessing. Uh, many changes now. The Passionists are all gone. Mm-hmm. The parish church at St. Gabriel's there was on the ground as well, and that's closed down as well. A private developer bought the land, um, but we maintain the shrine there on the property. I hope that never goes away. Yes, uh, it's been a blessing in mm-hmm. the uh, mm-hmm. really providence that uh, God has allowed us to be there and stay there. So tell us a little bit about what goes on with the reparation work, with the pilgrimages, that people go there on a day trip? Yeah, we, uh, we're open daily, usually from 9 to 5 during the day on the weekdays. We get a lot of traffic. People from the hospital come over during their lunch breaks. There's now people, they converted the monastery, and there's a couple of new apartment buildings that they built on the grounds. And so there's a lot of new influx of people in the neighborhood, and they come uh, They come to the shrine here and there. We have also have the rosary daily. I think Mike, at uh, 12 noon, has a rosary there, and he has a group that comes in with the, has a devotion to the Holy Face and the Flame of Love devotion. We also have the rosary for peace on every Sunday at 2 p.m. On occasion, we'll try to have adoration at the shrine as well. Mm-hmm. Do you have a website? We do. It's FatimaShrineBoston.org or .com. FatimaShrineBoston. All one word. .org or .com. Right. Either one will get you there, right? Yep. And what else is on the website? So it has your schedule? We have a schedule, upcoming celebrants for our devotions. Uh, we post a newsletter. We also have a newsletter that goes out in the regular mail. We have a Facebook page that you can connect uh, with the uh, webpage as well. 
upcoming events, uh, different blogs we post on there. You know, that's that's huge. You know. That's terrific. Yeah. What an asset. You know, I never knew all those things. Yeah. Wow, yeah. and Dr. Jackson used to be there all the time, right? That's right. Dr. Yeah. Helen Jackson was a faithful member, came mm-hmm. almost every day to the shrine. Oh. Very often, like during the fall, winter, mm-hmm. or during Advent or Lent, we'd have special rosaries in the afternoon. Yes. And Dr. Helen Jackson would come very often, yeah. Yes, very distinguished people there. Mike, I'm sure you want to talk a little bit about reparation because that seems like that's the theme here with Our Lady of Fatima. Well, Ned was the talking message. about our, our our shrine and our webpage and, uh, you know, the devotions we have. And I think it's important to realize the reason why we are dedicated and have so much time as we're trying to respond to Our Lady's call to make reparation for the sins of the world. And there's a couple of quotes I just wanted to share with you. Sister Lucia, who was one of the visionaries, the main visionary, the oldest girl during the apparition, had her apparition um, about 10 years after. And the Blessed Mother and our Lord appeared to her on December 10, 1925, and She said, behold, she appeared to Sister Lucia. This is after the five apparitions in 1917. This is 1925. And she said, behold, my heart encircled with thorns with which ungrateful men pierce it at every moment by their blasphemies and gratitude. And she was holding the baby Jesus in her hands, uh, the child Jesus in her hands. And he said, have pity on the heart of your most holy mother, It is covered with the thorns with which ungrateful men pierce it at every moment, and there is no one to remove them with an act of reparation. So that's what Ned has been involved in many years at the Shrine. I've joined a few years ago. This is what we're trying to accomplish at the Shrine, to make reparation for sin and to grow closer to Our Lady and to our Lord through her uh, Immaculate Heart. Beautiful. So that's the mission. Thank you. And Ned, going back to you, do you want to comment on that or have another thought you'd want to share? Yeah, I think that was it's important to recognize it was the child Jesus who appeared with Mary on that date, and it was he spoke first. And the quote that Mike just said was came from our Lord. And when Our Lady appeared to the children at Fatima, uh, one of the things that she did say is that God wished to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. And this is part of it. And she appeared to the children in July 13th, 1917. She said that she would come back and ask for the first Saturday devotions at some later date. And that's the date that Mike gave, December 10th, 1925. And that first Saturdays were established as a reparation for the sins of the world and for the conversion of Russia. And it was a plan that Our Lady laid out for the world to practice, to convert the world for the conversion of sinners as well. Um, And she said, if people practice this devotion, that Russia would be converted um, and there would be peace in the world. But if they didn't, a greater war would break out in the pontificate of Pope Pius XI, and it would be worse than the war um, that they were undergoing at the time which was the First World War. So I think it's important, too, with these children, Jacinta, Francisco, seven, eight years old, and Sister Lucia, who was 10 years old at the time, would offer up all kinds of sacrifice and suffer a great deal for this purpose. So I think it's um, important to understand that, that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We can see it in the world today. The world seems like it's going mad, especially to those of us who are Christians. Um, You have abortion on demand. Um, You know, the government in power is trying to get a bill passed that will allow for abortion up to the day of birth and then even allow a baby to be killed after it's born if the mother doesn't want it. All this transgenderism, church attendance is down. So the need for those of us who believe to make apparition, to pray, and to fast, I think is greater now more than ever. Good point. Yeah. Very good point. Yeah. And so what were those, if you want to talk about it now or later, we can. What is the First Saturday devotion? Do you want to talk about that a bit? Uh, Sure. 
the first Saturday devotion, actually I'll give you a quick little history of it. Um, as we know in the church, Saturday is traditionally dedicated to Mary. It goes way back to ancient times. And it kind of grew towards the end of the 19th century and into the 20th century. In fact, St. Pius X, uh, 1905, issued a decree in which praised the practice of the first Saturdays, and he offered an indulgence later on in that year. Um, it wasn't the first Saturday devotion as, as it was laid out by Our Lady of Fatima, but it was a way of dedicating yourself to Our Lady on Saturday. So you could see that the practice was there, but when Our Lady appeared to the children, and this is probably 20 years later, 25 years later, she laid out the actual practice of the first Saturdays, specifically for those reasons. So the first five Saturdays were to, uh, they were established to uh, form a habit in people to, to practice this. So you had to go to Mass every, every uh, and communion or confession every Saturday for the first, first five months? Well, the reasons for Saturdays is because our Lord appeared to Sister Lucia in May of 1930, or in June of 1930, uh, in the chapel in the convent. And he's quoted saying, my daughter, the motive is simple. There are five ways in which people offend and blaspheme against the Immaculate Heart. And these five ways are, number one, uh, blasphemes against the Immaculate Conception. Number two, against her perpetual virginity. Three, against her divine maternity. Four, for those who try to publicly implant in children's hearts indifference and contempt, even hate against the Immaculate Mother. And five, those who insult Our Lady directly in her sacred images. So those are the five reasons that our Lord stayed in 1930 for the first five Saturdays. Also, it was a way, if you make the first five Saturdays in consecutively uh, to establish a habit in devoting Saturdays to Our Lady. Very interesting because uh, as we speak, uh, we're doing this program on the first uh, Sunday in May, May 2nd, right? And so I, I really think Our Lady has her hand on both of you gentlemen to really move with this devotion, right? Especially the month of May, Our Lady. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a clarion call. Mm -hmm. I want to recap this for our listeners. I hope you are all going to do this if you're listening. So it doesn't matter what month you start in, correct? That's right. There's uh, a couple of qualifications, Marianne. The okay. first is um, that you receive Holy Communion and Confession on five consecutive first Saturdays. And you can go to confession eight days before or after, and it's still good. And to pray five decades of the rosary, mm -hmm. and and we're starting to do this now at the shrine as well, besides praying five decades of the rosary, aside from that, spend 15 minutes in meditation on the mysteries of the rosary. So we're starting to do that now. And this is to make reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And if you do that for five times in a row, the Lord promised through the Blessed Mother to mm -hmm. give you all the graces you need to get to heaven. Right. I thought you had also had to offer your communion up in reparation to Our Lady. Yes. And is, that has to is be... Is that true? The, yes. yes. Uh, all of them. Yeah. Confession as well. Yeah. That has to be the, in, the intention of the Mass. We, mm -hmm. That's what we're explaining to the people now when they come. You can't just come to the first Saturday and not know what you're doing. Right. You have to have the intention in your heart, I'm offering us up in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. That's beautiful. Yeah. And some I know in um, our parish here, we have confession as well after the Mass, so that confession would count, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes, you within eight days eight of days. the um, yeah. making the first Saturday Mass, mm -hmm. you right. can make a confession. Now, what about if you do it once, the five Saturdays? I also heard, I don't. you can tell me if it's true or not, that the next time you could offer it up, like for soul. Is that true? That you, or you can continue gaining indulgences every time you do the first five is that applicable yes. to holy souls? Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it, it's, you're not restricted to just five for Saturday. Is that, is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can. Yeah. Um, Keep going. You could continue making that. That's the idea. I think. I think the idea was by having 
five consecutive first Saturdays, you would form the habit, mm -hmm. and then attend monthly on uh, the first Saturday of the month, monthly confession, so on and so forth. Yes, and you would you would receive the indulgence. Yes. Yeah. You know. So it would be a plenary under the usual circumstances, which you have to do Correct. the prayers for the Holy Father? Right, and which we cover at our devotional service. Yes. So yeah. we. Yeah. Well, I hope everyone's marking their calendar for the next first Saturday where the real deal is, where you gentlemen are. So give them the directions. How, how can they get there? By bus? By car? There is a bus that goes uh, by, their, by the shrine. Um, I think it's 57. I forget the actual number of the bus. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's 155 Washington Street. 155 Washington Street. In it's Brighton. on the ground to the old Passionist Monastery. Yeah. I think the uh, new development is called Overlook, St. Gabriel's. Oh. It's right behind uh, St. Elizabeth's Hospital. So they have to get to St. Elizabeth's Hospital, which is pretty central. There's a train that goes up the street, right? Yeah. Yeah, ComAv, there's a train. Uh, you can get off on that side as well on and Washington Street mm -hmm. and walk up from there. Because uh, a lot of people will do that. Yeah. yeah they we, will. We, we get yeah. many to do that, that come by bus and yeah. taxi, Uber, bike, uh, walk. Yeah. Um, wow, that's so impressive. Yeah. Do you yeah. ever um, put any video of it on YouTube? We do. We're just starting to develop a YouTube channel. Great. And uh, we're starting to film. So on our Facebook page, uh, we have as well, we have, uh, for instance, yesterday was the first Saturday of the month, May 1st, uh, St. Joseph the Worker. And we filmed it, and it's on our Facebook page. If you go there, you can see the entire Mass. What's the Facebook page name? Uh, it's at Fatima Shrine Boston. Oh, perfect. Um, yeah. At Fatima Shrine Boston. Yeah, and there's a, there's a button you can connect to, the, to that from our website as well. Beautiful, because I think Facebook, uh, you know, does have its advantages. Yeah, it's the only reason why I kept uh, uh, It's the a page difficult because, decision. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's funny, we get a different demographic on our Facebook page. And you they're do. mostly younger people and many Hispanics. So um, we've, we've kept that and keep them informed, but mm -hmm. we're always looking for new followers. Um, yeah. I so. think you're going to start seeing a new surge. I, I see people coming. We have Eucharistic Adoration here at St. Joseph's in Medford uh, three days a week, and the surge of people adore is coming. I, I don't even know where they're coming from. Praise so the people Lord. Uh, you know, know there's so much you can take of what's going on mm -hmm. in our world, and now they all know it's time. Yeah. It's time to yeah. come back. It's time to be praying more. Right. Mm. Marianne, just let me read you a yes. quote that... Um, St. Lucia said in 1957 she was being interviewed about Our Lady of Fatima. This is decades after the 1917, like four decades after the apparitions. And she said to uh, Father Fuentes, is it, Ned? Fuentes. Fuentes. He was the uh, postulator of the causes originally for uh, St. Jacinta and St. Francisco. Oh, but, okay. But after he made that public, he was released from that. Okay. Well, he was interviewing Sister Lucia in 1957, and he said to Father Funt, and Sister Lucia, who is now St. Lucia, said, Look, Father, the Most Holy Virgin in these last times in which we live has given new efficacy, new power in the recitation of the Holy Rosary. She has given this efficacy, this power, to such an extent that there is no problem, no matter how difficult it is, whether temporal or or above all spiritual, in the personal life of each of us, of our families, of the families in the world, or of religious communities, or even of the life of peoples and nations that cannot be solved by the rosary. There is no problem, I tell you, no matter how difficult it is, that we cannot solve by the prayer of the Holy Rosary. With the rosary, we will save ourselves we will sanctify ourselves. We will console our Lord and obtain the salvation of many souls. Beautiful. Every apparition at Fatima, there was two things Our Lady always requested. And one was that you pray the rosary every day. And the other one was to return here on the 13th of next month. Wow. So uh, that shows how important the rosary is. Yeah. Yes. I know you've had some events there also. Uh, my friend Helen Sears was uh, a very strong proponent of that, and I know she led some rosaries, and she's had, like, you know, health up and down like we all do. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping she gets back on track. 
She and was there this yes, Saturday. She was there this Saturday. Oh, yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Helen. I hope you're listening. I'm yeah. going to send you the warning to put <laughs> this on <laughs> and know we're talking about you. <laughs> so. And she led us in the rosary the last oh, beautiful. Uh, first Saturday. Beautiful, yeah, beautiful. She's a beautiful woman. Yes. Yeah. We have beautiful Catholics here in Boston that have yeah. a deep faith that most people don't see it. It doesn't really come up like a light on our head. But w- when we're all together, the presence of God is so strong. Amen. Right? Mm-hmm. Amen. And the fear yeah. that you might have carried yes. in on your backpack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with strength in numbers, that's what yeah. I always say. Yes. Yeah. I think there's a lot of fear in the world today, uh, especially with the COVID virus and everything. They have seem to have created a lot of fear. And I think when people do come together, pray to rosary or come together in groups and community like that, it alleviates a lot of the fear. Yes. So I think that's an really important as well component to everything we do. That's beautiful. I, and I think we're living in times that call for that, for Christians and Catholics to come together more often, more frequently uh, for these types of things. I, I'm glad you're saying that, uh, Ned, because that's really what people need to hear, that encouragement and that motivation to come out. You know, a Saturday morning is beautiful to go pray, and mm-hmm. then you have the rest of your day. Right. 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 And you're more energized. Yes. Right? Plus. Any, s- any signs that have shown up there of people witnessing to what happens when they come? Anybody? Does any? Even the priests, Marianne, who mm-hmm. go there, and the people who come, they say the priests who come from parishes all over the archdiocese, there's something special about this place. They really feel a special peace. And so the people who come and celebrate Mass with us say the same thing. There's just, you can feel it in your spirit during and after Mass. Beautiful. Yeah. So uh, that's something, um, if you're thinking about going there. There's a beautiful story mm-hmm. I'd like to share with you. If Please. I was Dr. Uh, Helen Jackson, there was a, a Muslim fellow who used to come to the shrine quite often. I think he was living in uh, the neighborhood. I think he was doing some postgraduate work. And Dr. Helen and a few other people at the shrine kind of befriended him. Well, I got a call from him sometime afterwards, wanted to know if I had her number. Apparently, he's converted. And these words brought into the church, and he wanted to call and thank Dr. Helen for all her support and rosaries and prayers for him. That's the story so those I was are the kind looking of for. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. I get, I used to get uh, petitions. We used to often read the petitions for the first Saturday Mass, and we certainly put those petitions on the altar. But if you read them, there's just incredibly stories about what people go through and suffer and the faith and devotion they have, especially to Our Lady and the uh, healings. Um, there's a woman who used to contact us from Florida, send us actually a donation every month and claims it was our late through our prayer. She went to the hospital, St. Elizabeth's Hospital, happened to stumble across the shrine and prayed to Our Lady Fatima. And through that, she was somehow healed. So we always heard stories like that as well. And so those, those are touching. But uh, So that that's the fruit. Yeah. That's the fruit. Everybody wants to know this fruit, and that, that definitely... So could people still send you petitions, either by email? Or sure, uh, online. We online? get all, we, we get many online now. In the Shrine, there's, uh, we have uh, uh, slips they can fill out. Um, yeah, either way. box, a prayer box that they can put it in. Oh, in a prayer box. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a, a great incentive to you who are listening today that you have the Holy Spirit have you tune in so that you'd hear this message and see how you can... Uh, fulfill Our Lady's wishes. Come to Boston, do a pilgrimage, pray the rosary more, uh, find a way that your own parish could do these five first Saturdays, right? Right, actually, yeah. um, that's one of the things. We used to attract hundreds of people to the shrine for the first Saturdays. The numbers have dwindled quite a bit over the years, and one of the reasons is that many of them spend off to local parishes and are having their own first Saturday devotion, which is a good thing. Right. So. There's not many here in yeah. this area. So the shrine works. Well, we're winding down to the bottom of our show, but we're going to ask you to come back and do a second show. Can you do that? Sure. Sure. All right. Let's say a closing prayer. Who would like to lead one? Hail Mary. Yeah, I'll say Hail Mary and Thanksgiving for the show, Marianne, to bless you and your radio show and that we all continue to hear the word of the Lord and respond to it as he desires us to. Hail Mary, full of grace, grace, the the Lord Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, 
pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, Blessed Mother, for sending these beautiful gentlemen here today on this month of May to inspire everybody listening and to make good Marian resolutions. Thanks for tuning in. Till next time, God bless you all. Hi, my name is Christine McWilliams. I live in Lemonster, and I love listening to WQPH Radio. So, Connie, talking about a busy week, were you here when we had Father Andre come from New Bedford to do the Cynical for Priests? Yes, I was. Incidentally, Father comes from a place a little bit further away <laughs> than New Bedford. Hmm. He comes from the western part of Australia, Mm -hmm. Perth. Perth, yes, that's a beautiful place. So we were very grateful to have Father come from New Bedford. His reason for coming was to lead us in the formation of Cenacles for Priests. We are hoping that Prayers for Life will have time and energy and the blessing to create a lot of little prayer cells just to pray for our priests. Our parish priests work very, very hard. And so we did a group, Cynical, to the Marian Movement of Priests. If you will have an idea that you might want to form one, you could call us, 617-459-8735. We had about 25 people here, Connie, and that was a beautiful rosary that he prayed, and then he had us kneel, if we could, and pray the consecration to Our Lady. This is the way to change the world. Our priests need our prayers. Thank you, Connie, for coming. In addition to being a very holy priest, he has a very keen sense of humor. Hope to be seeing more of him and more prayer cynicals. Thank you, Connie. Experience the incredible story of the woman who Time Magazine named the most influential Catholic woman in the United States. Born Rita Rizzo, the future Mother Angelica grew up in a rough neighborhood in Canton, Ohio. Young Rita experienced abandonment, rejection, and heartache, but God touched her through a woman named Rhoda Wise. Encounter this amazing woman at the Mother Angelica Museum. Plan your visit today at motherangelicamuseum.com. Good St. Joseph, we seek your intercession. If you would like to help us honor St. Joseph, request a book of his Holy Cloak Novena. You can obtain one by going on our website, www dot wqphradio.org and request one and it will be mailed to you or you can call us and we can try to get one to you. Our number is 978-343-0893. Thank you for listening to another edition of WQPH's Local Matters. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast and hope you have a blessed week.